uh, we're going to talk about Social Security and Medicare. Um, it's estimated this year that one third of the federal budget, I looked it up, uh, is about $2 trillion will go towards Social Security benefits and Medicare benefits this year. Mr. Fung, uh, there's been a lot of reporting in the last week on a budget plan by the House Republican Study Committee, which proposes raising the full eligibility age for Social Security to 70 years old and the Medicare eligibility age to 67. If you're elected, would you support or oppose those increases in the eligibility age? Well, Ted, here's one thing. You see that woman that's sitting in the front row? That's my mom. She worked 35 years running a Chinese restaurant, serving the public. Now she's retired, and she's one of hundreds of thousands of mothers, fathers, grandparents in Rhode Island that rely on that Social Security check. I will not do anything, unlike what Seth Magaziner is outright lying again in his ads, to do anything that will impact her and all the other recipients of Social Security uh, in the state of Rhode Island or across the country. But forward looking, that's, that's kind right. of the point here's, that Republicans have said, don't change it for current people, but for future people, here's 70 I, for Social Security, 67 for right. Medicare, you open to that. Here's what, here's what I could be supportive, and there's bipartisan you know, support on this bill. It's called Scrap the Cap. So that individuals like Seth's family, who doesn't rely upon Social Security checks like my mom does, would shoulder a little bit more of the burden to help save the system. That's what I would be supportive of to help save the system. Well, Ms. Magnier, many yeah. Democrats so, also want to scrap the cap. What do you say? We should do that. But listen, again, clear contrast here. He has committed himself repeatedly to voting for a Republican leadership team that has said that cutting Social Security and Medicare is one of their top priorities. And you don't have to take my word for it. Kevin McCarthy, the guy who he, he says should be the next Speaker of the House, literally co-authored a book calling for cutting Social Security. The top Republican on the Budget Committee in the House, a guy named Jason Smith, who came here to campaign with Alan Fung a few weeks ago, gave an interview last week where he said that if the Republicans take control and he's in charge of the Budget Committee, cutting Social Security and Medicare would be his top priority, and he's even willing to shut down the government to do it. Look, I spend a lot of time in senior centers all across the district. I know that people are struggling, and Social Security is the one chance that seniors have to keep up with the cost of living. I am not going to vote for a leadership team in Congress that wants to cut Social Security and Medicare. Allen has given his allegiance to a group of people who have said that it's one of their top priorities. Before I bring in Mr. Fung, I just I read the same Washington Post and Bloomberg articles, Mr. Yeah. Magaziner, and they, those Republicans said clearly they don't believe it's cutting those programs to change yeah. benefits for future recipients if you hold yeah. current people harmless. Yeah, tell that to somebody who's 64, 65 years old now. Listen, the Republican policies that they are proposing they're talking about raising the retirement age. They're talking about changing the inflation formula so that people on Social Security don't get the same cost of living increases to keep up with the cost of living. These are cuts. They're, they're calling them by you know, names that don't sound so harmful. They're trying to window dress it. But cuts are cuts. And I will not support any cut to Social Security or Medicare. You talk about Medicare as well. The Democrats in Congress just passed a bill a month ago to cap the cost of prescription drugs for people on Medicare. Every single Republican voted against it. Allen said that he would have voted against that bill, too. Seniors are getting killed by the cost of prescription drugs. And once again, Allen is taking the side of the drug companies, not of seniors who are struggling. I'll let you respond. Yeah, on both of those issues, because quite honestly, what I want the viewers to know and everyone in the district to know is I will be an independent voice standing up for Rhode Island values and it's standing up for those that are on Social Security because the ones that are taking away Social Security isn't going to be myself. It's Seth Magaziner because he's doubling down on the same economic policies of President Biden as well as Speaker Pelosi that's taking money out of your pockets more than what you are getting from Social Security or any income. And, you know, when you're paying more for energy costs, gas prices, food prices, all of that is coming out of your pocket. 47% just for electricity is an increase. 15% for gas. That is outrageous. That's what I'm going down to DC yeah, to fight you, for. But listen, and you, you don't get to say that you're outraged by the cost of living if you opposed raising the minimum wage from $7 to $8, if you say that you want to put a leadership team in place that is determined to cut Social Security and Medicare, and if you say that you want to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which would cause 70,000 Rhode Islanders to lose their health insurance. If you care about the cost of living, you would support raising incomes and protecting benefits for working people. And here's, here's the other part that you know, I want to address, because when you take a look at what people are getting paid now, it's more than any arbitrary minimum wage. And this is what is going on. And even then, 
they can't keep up because of the policies that he wants to double down on. We can't afford Seth Magaziner and his continued failed policies that are crippling America. But I also want to address that prescription drug issue that he wants to talk about. Because this to is be clear, also we're talking about the changes in the Inflation Reduction Act? Correct. Yeah. Because he's trying, you know, because on that, this is something that's also personal to me. Because of the other family member that's sitting out in that audience is my uh, younger sister, Arlene, who has disabilities, pre-existing conditions, and requires life-saving medication every single day, insulin. You don't think I would do anything, move heaven and earth, to help her or any other family members across that face the same situations like her? I would definitely do that. But let's look at the reality of what that bill that Seth wants to keep doubling down on. It added billions in uh, new taxes to the middle class. It added 87,000 IRS agents that are going to be targeting the middle class. That's more IRS agents than people living in the city of Cranston. They're coming after us, and we can't afford to have these policies. I do want to move so, on, but I so, will give you 30 seconds, but right. we do need to go to a new so topic. So what you just heard is an outright lie. Listen, this was a bill to cap the cost of prescription drugs what was for people on Medicare. Like? Well, that it would raise taxes on the middle class. So there was no tax increase in that bill for anyone making less than $400,000 a year. The Treasury said specifically that those IRS agents are only to audit people making more than $400,000 a year, including, I'm sure, some of the billionaires who are funding his campaign. What he is saying is that protecting tax breaks for billionaire tax cheats is more important to him than lowering the cost of prescription drugs for seniors. That is just another sign that he, like all the other extreme Republicans in Washington, are putting their campaign funders, the drug companies, the insurance companies, ahead of what is right for Rhode Islanders. And I will not stand for that. When I am in Congress, you know that I will be on the right side of this every time.